Greetings, everyone. Um, uh, thank you for joining us tonight for our Wednesday night Vespers for uh, November the 18th. Uh, I'm coming to you tonight from uh, this lovely prayer room uh, outside the uh, gymnasium at the church uh, provided by the Boozer family. If you haven't uh, been in here, it's just a very comfortable, quiet, uh, uh, worshipful uh, atmosphere. A good place to come and, and collect your thoughts and pray. Um, I wanted to uh, just touch on a couple of things that's happened uh, in the church over the past uh, uh, month or so. Um, I hope you're able to either join us in person or to view online uh, the service where we had Dr. Bill Owen, uh, who is uh, assigned to lead our church through the uh, uh, See the Center for Healthy Church's uh, pastor search process, Dr. Oakwood spoke to us uh, about the self-study phase of the process, and he told us that we needed to, uh, to get rid of baggage and really focus on the things that uh, the church does well. A key point of his uh, message was the need to practice the wisdom of holy indifference and that we pray uh, not our will, but God's will be done. Um, nothing else, nothing more, and nothing less. In the coming days, you'll receive uh, information in the mail about the formation of our vision leadership team. Uh, it's one of the first phases in this process that we're going through. Um, but they'll be leading the church in a visioning process and uh, the development of a pastor profile that will be passed on to the search committee uh, as a guide to search for our next pastor. Uh, also, uh, very excited to share with you, as we did this past Sunday, uh, that the deacons and the personnel committee called Dr. Mark Wilbanks to serve as our interim pastor at Williams. Um, if you recall, he brought the message uh, on Sunday, November the 8th. Mark will be begin uh, his first Sunday in December, uh, on December the 6th. And uh, during the month of December, that Mark will only be with us on Sundays uh, because of the holiday season, just a lot going on. Uh, so we thought we would start with just uh, one day a week, obviously Sundays. Uh, and then beginning in January, uh, Mark will be with us on two days a week. Um, he will be here on Sunday. Uh, and then again on Wednesday. So uh, Mark and his wife Kimberly, out by the way, are currently live in Hoover, but please extend uh, a Williams welcome to Mark when you have the opportunity to, to meet him. And we'll get more information in his um, uh, bio sketch and uh, uh, he'll get you'll have opportunities to see him more in the uh, very near future. Uh, Bob McLeod will be with us uh, on Sunday, November the 22nd, and then Nikki uh, will do the hanging of the green service on November the 29th. So I hope that you will be able to join us either uh, in person or through the uh, internet broadcast for both of these services. Um, for my devotional tonight, I did, uh, I want to spend a little time uh, sharing a few thoughts about our giving. Uh, the Bible has a lot to say about giving. Uh, if you go in and, and start looking, you know, searching for th that uh, guidance, you will find it in many, many uh, chapters. But I want to uh, read to you tonight from 2 Corinthians uh, 9, uh, 7 through 8, and then uh, 11 and 12. Each of you must uh, give as you have made up your mind, not reluctant, reluctantly, are under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. And then 11 and 12, uh, you will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God uh, through us. For the redeeming <clears throat> for the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also uh, overflows with many th thanksgivings to God. 
May he bless the reading of his word. Uh, I get questions uh, often uh, about how's the church doing? And usually that question is, how's the church doing financially? Uh, it's a legitimate question given uh, all that's transpired in the past uh, many months. Um, I will tell you that the financial health of the church is, is good. It's stable. <clears throat> Through October, our tithes and offerings are on par with uh, the two, uh, 2019. Uh, while our operating budget expenses are down somewhat, uh, as you would expect, with, with not having a pastor. Uh, giving to our designated fund and building reserve accounts continue to grow. Um, we need to continue the faithful and generous giving. Uh, the investment we're making in the uh, Center for Healthy Churches to uh, uh, shepherd us through the uh, pastor search process will pay huge dividends as we go forward. We now have an interim pastor coming on board that will provide the stability that I think everyone desires uh, during the, the search for a new pastor. Um, we have a project to renovate the sanctuary and we will be saying more about that later. Uh, and of course, we have to continue to maintain our staff, uh, support our missions uh, and ministries of the church, which takes money uh, for things like utilities and insurance. So, you know, good job. Uh, keep up the faithful giving. Uh, it now is as important as it ever is in the life of the church. When we give and serve, uh, we have an opportunity to participate in God's work. God calls us to give and serve in the church even if our service and giving goes unnoticed. When we fall to, fail to serve and, and give in the church, we don't get to participate in, in, uh, in what God's doing among us. We give to God through our time. Uh, many of you spend time visiting elderly, and especially now in the, the, this uh, current uh, health uh, epidemic that we're in, uh, it's more important, especially for those that are, you know, sheltering at home and staying out of crowds that are not able to come, don't feel comfortable coming to church, to make sure that they stay in touch and, stay, and that they are reminded that they're not forgotten. Uh, we need to check on them. And we can do that even if you can't visit, you can make phone calls. And many of you are doing that already. Um, we've had many building projects to help those that need. Uh, there's been uh, some of you uh, build access ramps for physically uh, challenged neighbors. We've built or renovated homes following disasters or for people that just uh, need a hand up. We've cleared storm debris when it's necessary, when uh, we've had uh, those situations come through our community. Are you receiving the blessings promised for generosity and cheerful giving to God's ministry? My prayer tonight is that each of us would examine our giving both in financial and service opportunities, the, uh, then challenge ourselves to be faithful and generous in our giving to God's ministry at First Baptist Williams and the community we serve. Remember our mission statement of touching lives by sharing the love of Jesus. Let's make that true. While we're not, while we may not see the immediate needs or results of giving and serving, the ultimate motivation is to please Christ simply because he calls us to and because we love him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, keep us faithful in our, and give us the generosity to meet our financial needs of your ministry here at the church. Help us to stay true to our mission of sharing your love with our neighbors and around the world through our mission efforts. We pray for those in the community and around the world suffering from the effects of the virus. Be with those who have lost loved ones and give our medical professionals the know-how to treat the sick and produce a vaccine. Be with our church as we go through the pastor uh, search process. Lead us to the person you are calling to lead us in your ministry. 
we pray not our will, but your will be done. Nothing else, nothing more, nothing less. Forgive us where we fall short in our ministry and obedience to your word. Amen. Again, thank you for uh, tuning in tonight, and I hope to see you soon in one of our services.